Welcome back to Bait and Tackle, guys. I just got back from getting my eyes dilated. That was terrible. Um, I wanted to do a new video for you guys to show you the tackle shop, to show you everything that I can do. Um, I've got a lot of different molds, lead and plastics. Um, what I've built so far to help me um, do my work safely, like this big vent hood that I've got set up here, this is my plastic pouring station. And I plan on doing some airbrushing here as well. Um, I also have a ton of different skirt making products, a ton of different skirt colors. Um, I've got pretty much everything I need to make most things. So let's just, uh, I'm going to give you a little tour, a little dime tour around the entire area that I've got set up here in my basement. And I'll show you what I've got going on. So we're going to start over here. And this is kind of my workbench. I've got a nice little chair here. It's a high workbench. And um, over here, I do a lot of my lead pouring. You see my red heat gun back there. Um, nice little magnetic uh, mat that I've got to put baits on. It kind of keeps everything in place, especially the metal parts. Um, got a lot of, I've seen, as you notice, I've got a lot of parts just sitting here. I've got some bags of hooks that I ordered. And I've got a bag, some bags of uh, spinner parts that I ordered. And then this blue one right here is kind of my little, my main little organization type bin where I've got all my spinner parts, hooks, Ned, Ned head stuff, um, underspins, rattles, all the different, um, all the different wire forms, all the different uh, pins, all the different blades, um, skirt making stuff. Um, pr pretty much everything I need that's as far as like small parts goes hitch posts that kind of thing for jigs so that's kind of a little bit of what we do over here just I just wanted to show you the lead part of the process and here's the heat gun you've seen that in one of my previous videos already um, if not go check that out I did a um, a howl jig or shaky head jig um, video with some plastic worms some finesse worms but this is my um, lead pouring station so I built a small box and I've got it sealed down and I've got plexiglass here and uh, I've just got an open part here so that I can get in, in underneath and work so there's my one lead pot and I've got a couple different lead pots down here and there's a majority of the hooks that I use for different jigs and whatnot <clears throat> but I've also got some obviously a lighter stick and a candle for doing um, for uh, smoking the molds that kind of thing but I just I just got some mold release so I'm kind of excited about that but each one of these cabinets I got a little strip here and it might be a little loud but I put a light bar in each one of these boxes and this has a four inch duct that goes up and out the window so I've got a nice little vent thing there and I've got a one-way trap so the air will only go one direction and I've also got it seg segregated because I've got two different vents. I've got a six inch for the plastic and then I've got a four inch for the lead. So I've got it segregated out. So let me turn this off. I'll show you the big one. And the big one, I put a switch out here. And this one's a little bit louder. But as you can notice, I've got the six inch duct that goes out the same pipe. They go out the same pipe out the window and it's all funneled into the top of this box. So this box is fairly massive. I think it's almost five feet wide, uh, between four and five feet, something like that. Actually, it's five feet. I know it's five feet. And what I did was, because I could only get a big enough piece of plexiglass that was four feet wide, I just put little wood, um, wood spacers on the outside edge. So, and I put some stickers up there. But the cool part about this one, uh, you know, I've got the lights in there again, just like I did the other one. But there's my microwave, some of my plastics. Um, I've got some more plastic stuff coming. But here's some of my tools, so my clamps for my um, plastic molds. And then here's a lot of my tools as far as, you know, stirring uh, plastics, my um, uh, infrared thermometer for measuring the temperature of the plastics, and, uh, you know, some cutting shears. So just stuff like that, little measuring spoons in there for doing the glitter. But I've got um, a whole pile of different glitters. I've got a whole bunch of colorants. Uh, I just got out my airbrushing stuff. I'm going to start doing that here relatively soon. Probably do some jig heads and whatnot. And then that is the vacuum system to get the air bubbles and moisture out of your plastic. And 
I've seen both where you can do it either cold or hot. Um, I've got some lure blanks sitting here, some plastics for one of my buddies, Matt. He's going to be getting those. And then I got a little, little cooling tank here, or test tank, when I go to test some lures, just to throw them in there. And in the back there, I got all my different scents that you can use to smell up your baits pretty well. And then, um, looks like I've got here is a box of used plastics I've got separated by color. And there's a whole bunch of my injectors. Um, I use the ones from Lure Craft. I haven't tried any of the other ones. I may do a video on the other types of injectors at some point here. They, uh, I've heard that they work a lot better than the ones that I have, but um, you, you know, you stay with what you work with. I got a dual injector there for doing laminate molds. Um, I've also got some, that's some UV clear coat back here for dipping, um, for dipping uh, lures into to seal them up real good. Yeah, of course, you got a couple catalogs there to look at. Then I got a box of pre made jigs already sitting down there, and some towels, and just some extra stuff I need. There's my uh, toaster oven for baking my jig heads, baking the paint. And then I've got a big pot for doing large, larger batches of plastic if I want to, just to keep everything at temperature. And uh, that's pretty much it. But I wanted to show you real quick that with this hood, I can unlatch this hood. I'll show you this one better. I made it so you can unlatch it and you can open this hood up. So then that way you've got the entire space and then I've got these little ropes hanging here that I just tie off to the seat. So now, as you can see, now I can open up the whole front of it. It's got a nice seal. I put a gasket in there so it seals off real good when you got it closed. But now I can get to it when I'm not pouring plastic. I can get in there. So um, if I need to like, I'm thinking about mounting some shelves in there. Give me some pointers if you guys want. Leave some comments down below. What, what should I do with that space? I'd like to put some shelves up in there so I can get some of that stuff off the workspace. You know what I mean? So I've got more workspace on the bottom. But let me know what you think. And, um, oh, oh yeah, the um, lead molds. So over here, on this side of the basement, I've got my wall of molds. So got a lot of different molds here. I've got uh, spinner molds and your underspin, vibrating lures, buzz, buzz baits, poison swing tail, football. I mean, I've got a ton of different ones, casting jigs whole bunch of different stuff. I can even do some uh, concave worm weights. Um, and then here's my plastic my plastic mold. So I've got a couple beaver, beaver bugs. I've got the uh, lizard baits, finesse crawler, Midwest finesse, the um, Ned head baits, the short baits, uh, penny, uh, yeah, penny tails, penny twist, twin tails. I got the, it's like a twin tail grub. Um, this is the Ripper, it's, that's one of the uh, swim baits, and the Senko. And then I've got a whole bunch of miscellaneous ones. I've got a um, whole bunch of like little bug baits. Um, but these are all that stone material, so you gotta spray them when you use them. Nice little drop shot thing there, a little unique little bug. So there's some things there that I can do that are a little bit different, more unique. Um, I've also got a couple different swim baits in here and another flipping bait. Um, I think I've got a, oh yeah, the uh, jerk bait or um, they call that fluke, fluke or jerk bait mold. So I got one of those. Um, I've also got some laminate plates for those, like so you can do, you can pour one side one color and then come back and shoot it again and make another side two colors. Um, some little trailers, some little uh, craw trailers, those come in handy. Um, and these are my 10 inch worm molds. And then I've got a tail mold for that as well. So you can pre-pour the tails and then put them into the molds and shoot the rest a different color. And then I've just got a couple, just uh, silicone molds. Um, just a, uh, this one's a 12, or one's a 12 inch worm and then one's a 10 inch worm. But 
they look they look a little bit like snakes so but you know they they're they're good molds they're good molds and i got some plastic bags there to bag some stuff up and some extra lures that were that i got from somewhere i'm sure as i turn around here i've got a big white box that goes inside the cabinet i'll show you guys that when I do my air brushing that'll sit inside the cabinet like that and it'll be pushed back farther obviously but uh, that'll give me a nice space to spray in and that way I won't get paint anywhere so I just made that out of some white foam board so, again the air brushing I'm gonna I'm pretty new at so I'm gonna start doing that a little bit more here time after time and then I've also got a nice little white box built, a white box for taking pictures of baits. I don't have the lights on right now, but just something that I can take some nice shots of the baits, try to get some nice pictures. That's, that's pretty much it. It's a, it's a nice little setup for what I've got going on. Um, I've got a, like I said, I've got a ton of skirt stuff right now. I've got a lot of jigs. I think I'm, I'm going to concentrate on making some jigs right now and um, even some spinner and buzz baits at the moment. I'm gonna start painting those, doing some airbrushing. So hopefully that you'll see those in videos soon to come. I do have an order for one of my buddies, uh, Tito, to do some um, toads and some lizards, and he wants them the green color on top of the white pearl uh, belly. So I'm gonna start working on those too. That'll probably be the next video after this one. But when I start first started this shop, I originally had like two or three molds and uh, a buddy that I ran into, Travis, he actually told me, hey, you know, I've got all this stuff. Would you be interested in buying it? So it took off from there. I bought the stuff from him. I bought a bunch of molds and lead and a bunch of the lead pots. I bought all that stuff from him. And it just progressed from there. I just started piecing stuff together and started making my own. And the success I've had just pouring my own baits, I mean, I would tell you guys as viewers to go out there get some of these things like just the things that you really enjoy in particular like what's your favorite bait and go get the stuff you want to make it i mean it's it's not hard it's very simple but that's it i mean i just wanted to give you guys a rundown of what i had here and just show you what it really takes to get a, a good setup and you really do have to have a good space to work in clean environment um safe obviously healthy I've got two little kids running around, so I don't want them, you know, being exposed to any of this bad stuff like lead and the smell of plastic and stuff like that. So, um, but one thing you want to keep in mind is you want to just make sure that you do it correctly the first time. I know I've, I've done this a lot in the past where I've done something part way or, you know, it's good enough, but it really wasn't the way I wanted to. Spend the time, even spend the money to get what you need the first time around and do it the, and do it right because you'll be kicking yourself for the rest of the time being like, oh, I should have really done this or I really should have done that. So, but anyway, that's enough lessons for today. So um, you guys stay tuned. We're going to have some more stuff. And again, if I can get the channel up to 100 subscribers, I would really like to start doing some tackle giveaways. Uh, might be doing some buzz baits. I'm going to do a ton of jig giveaways. So please, please subscribe if you haven't. Like, share the video as much as you possibly can. Um, I would really appreciate it. And we'll see you next time. Keep on baiting.